Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Yakima Ridgeback 4x hanging style rack here on our 2019 Toyota Sequoia. And that's going to be a really nice way to get you and four bikes to wherever you're going. Good for the family, you can hold up to 40 pounds with one bike or if you've got it fully loaded up to 150 pounds in total. The one thing I am going to warn you of if you are using it as like a family bike rack, these outer cradles are not going to be as easy to hold kids bikes. You're probably going to need an adapter bar because the arms are spaced apart so far. Now with something like the Kurt Premium, that's not going to be as much of an issue because those arms kind of narrow in. It's going to make it easier to accept a kid's bike on the end. So that's just something to consider based on how you're going to use this rack. Overall though, I like this rack a lot better because all the points of contact are going to be a bit nicer. So you can see up here where it's held in, you've got two points of contact on the top, as well as the anti-sway cradle here, keeping the side-to-side -side room to a minimum. So it's gonna help make sure you're not making too much contact from bike to bike, and this bike never comes in contact with the rack itself. Now, all you gotta do to get this removed is pinch in on the sides here and lift these strips up and out. I will recommend you keep a close eye on them because as you're removing the bike one might fall down you don't want those to go missing so then just to remove it you can lift it off and away nice and easy like that and then i always recommend just keeping these in place when you're not using them again just to make sure they don't get lost or misplaced and now that the bike is unloaded, we can actually tilt the rack away from the vehicle to get access to the back. You don't want to do this with the bikes loaded. So you just come to this black lever here and that will tilt the whole rack down and away, giving you access to the back. Now again, those levers are really nice and easy to use. The other option is the Kurt Premium there that I compared it to earlier. That uses a pin and clip system, which it's just not as user friendly you're more prone to pinching and the levers just make it nice and easy. So with it like this, let's go ahead and get some measurements. We're gonna start with how much it actually adds to the back of your vehicle here. So from the bumper out to the end, we're looking at about 40 inches of added length. And that's not too bad. You're not gonna be able to pull in your garage more than likely because the Sequoia is a large vehicle and with 40 inches of added length, you're gonna have trouble closing that garage door or parking spots. But with that gray lever we saw earlier on top, we can actually fold those arms down when the bike rack isn't in use and cut our distance down to only about 14 inches to the end here. So that's a lot less that you're adding on. And you know, in some bigger garages, you might be able to pull in with the rack installed and still close the door. That's really nice. And it's ready to go for whenever you're ready to use it next. Now down here at the bottom, we can see the anti-rattle device. This is completely tool free, so you don't have to carry a wrench or anything with you, keeping everything nice and tight, and it's lockable. So if we decide we want to lock this up, it's gonna free spin and keep your bike rack in place on your vehicle. Towards the hitch, we can see it can fit an inch and a quarter or a two inch hitch. For our two inch hitch on the Sequoia here, this is a perfect fit. And you can see there's no movement in that hitch whatsoever. Now again, I think the Ridgeback here is a fantastic bike rack. If you're gonna be using it for some kids' bikes, I'd maybe recommend looking at that Kurt Premium just because it's gonna be a little bit easier. But overall, the fit and finish of this Yakima one is really nice and I can't recommend it enough. Thanks for watching. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is gonna show us the side-to-side -side action which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.